What's up guys? This video is all about challenging yourself with the familiar. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm in a little desert wilderness called Dreamy Draw Park in Phoenix. It's about a three mile enclosure. It's uh, actually really close to my house. And I've been here dozens of times. So I know this place pretty well. But even so, every time I come here, there's something else that kind of strikes me as being unique. And a lot of it has to do with the weather. A lot of it has to do with the sky. A lot of it also has to do with the vegetation, the animals, the wildlife. Everything that is part of this park changes as the year progresses into different seasons, into different days and months. Never think that a place that you go to all the time remains the same, because that's just not true, particularly in a wilderness area. So I'm gonna go through this park. It's uh, still got 20 minutes till sunrise. Let's get going. still climbing up one of the trails here at Dreamy Draw Park and I know at this point I'm probably not going to get that epic sunrise shot taking in a wide panorama of some distant mountains or something. Um, what I'm going to try to do is focus more on intimate details and see how they change and see what's different from when I came here last time. like how the clouds are just a long nice streak that kind of end right there they swoop down under the horizon right at the four peaks not sure if you can see them right there um, but it's kind of it's kind of neat how they do that I know I'm not gonna be able to get a picture of that that panorama is kind of wide and there's not really a focal point so on, on, a, on a photo I don't think this scene would would really do anything justice it's just kind of cool to look at and see the different cloud cloud formations that happen. Let's keep moving. I have to uh, apologize for what I said earlier, that this park is a three mile enclosure of wilderness. It's actually significantly more than that. It's part of the greater Phoenix Mountain Preserve which probably encompasses closer to five or six square miles. Um, as I can definitely tell from the hike I'm doing right now, this place is massive. And I'm on a trail right now that I've never been on before. That's the beauty of this place. I've been here dozens of times, always trying new trails. And here's a brand new one. Can't wait to find out where it leads. And uh, as predicted, the sun actually did not give us a good sunrise anyway. It was blocked by some clouds on the eastern horizon. So that wasn't going to happen anyway, so I kind of got lucky because I wasn't in a position to get a shot of it. So at this point, I'm going to keep moving. There are some beautiful rock formations on my left and right sides with some good vantage points of distant mountains, as you can see behind me. I'm just waiting for some better light. I don't think it's going to happen today, but if it does, I'll be ready for it. Even if not, I'm going to try to find something to get a picture of. Let's try it. So I made it near the top of the trail and I couldn't really find any small intimate details in the landscape to capture to really make a compelling image. So I'm going to try to do that a little bit later on. What I do have is kind of a lone mountain in the mid-ground uh, and a nice long mountain range behind that. I believe it's the McDowell Mountain Range up near Scottsdale. And I do have some cool cloud cover going on behind those mountains. So it'll make an okay image. It's not nothing amazing, but it does give you a sense of what this landscape can offer. And I'll show you what I have going on on my camera. So as you can see, I have the low mountain that are somewhat in the middle of that scene. I zoomed in on it using my 70 to 300 lens. I'm currently at about 80 to 100 millimeters. And 
that mountain is pretty far away and you have that layer of mountains behind that in the far distance with some nice cloud cover. You can't really see it on the screen, uh, but you can see it right there. What I'm going to try to do is capture this all together. So the way to do this is by using a long lens. You pull in all the details that are far away and flatten the whole thing to make that mountain in the middle pop out and seem a little bit taller against that backdrop. That's the goal. If you were to use a really wide lens for this scene, everything would be tiny in the distance. So you need a longer lens. And what I'm doing is shooting at about f8, try to get everything nice and sharp. Bam, nailed it. So I've come across two kind of cool scenes from the exact same spot that I think will be cool images. The first one is behind me and it's overlooking this vista way up here of those rocks jutting up into the air that are catching those rays of sunlight. And a little bit below that, you have this cactus set against a rock. If I zoom in at about 70 to maybe 80, 85 millimeters, I can really crop that and get that really cool image of the foreground cactus and that rock being in the shadow with the top of the rock being set up against um, the sky and the direct sunlight hitting it. It's kind of a cool lesson in contrast. I don't know how great of an image it'll be, but it looks really cool in person. I'm going to try to capture it. We'll see what it looks like. My second photo is of an intimate landscape scene, and these are the kind of shots that I really enjoy finding. It is of this rock right in front of me, and you have kind of this little grassy stuff kind of growing right below it. Not really sure exactly what it is. Um, it's kind of hard to the touch, and you got this really cool texture going on of this rock um, and these grasses that are growing or plants that's growing right on the edge of it and I'm going to try to zoom in um, use and I'm going to try to use the macro aspect of my lens the 70 to 300 has a macro feature and I'm going to try to capture that really up close and get all those textures and make them come alive in a photo One of the most difficult things to do in landscape photography is tell a story with your image and have that story really speak to people. And it's all about finding simplicity, finding order in the chaos that surrounds you. And I am surrounded by chaos. And anytime you go to a wilderness, you are going to be surrounded by chaos. And it's your job when you're trying to get a compelling landscape photo to tell a story by using or finding simple things, isolating your subject, really getting that story to flow and make sense to the viewer, and trying to find a sense of order in the chaos, which is what I'm trying to do, and which is what everyone tries to do when they capture landscape photos. And in a setting such as this, the challenge is really to find that one cactus, that one mountain, that one viewpoint, that brings a sense of order, a sense of unity, a sense of singularity to the photo. And that's what really tells a story. So I think that's it for me here at Dreamy Draw Park in Phoenix. I'll see you on my next landscape adventure. Out.